the Lord just told me that this is going to be a stunning message <clears throat> that most people of our time and our day that's all they want to hear about is the future and <laughs> the future is so clearly written in the book of Revelation the beginning and the end of all things is so easily discerned for there's a lot of things you don't need to know but the basic things of life that you need to know some people just <clears throat> throw it aside <clears throat> it we don't need that it doesn't matter but you don't understand is all of it does matter and all of it matters with God. You see, the way God sees things, the way He thinks and the way He feels is absolutely revealed in His Word. He tells you so clearly and so plainly what the truth is. But there are many people who have been born into this world during a time of great deception during a time where practically no truth exists I wouldn't say no truth I would say very little truth exists and if you don't allow the truth of the word to come into your heart and mind then you have no room to ever see what is real or unreal what is truth or not truth you have nothing to compare it to when they destroy deliberately history when they remove in some places the Word of God your only lifeline is the Word of God now I'm going to tell you a little bit about what the future is going to bring it seems like those who have all the money all the power all the control have worked overtime to control the everyday person which is people like you and I the things that go through the air that influence us you know like the Bible says every wind that blows this wind blows and you pick it up and you go in that direction for a while and you find out that's not where God wants me and so the wind blows more this way and and you find out that can't be God and then it blows this way and you go this way it blows through the mouth of people it blows with what comes out of their mouth and goes into the air that's what makes the Word of God so important because you can listen every day to a commentary and it blows this way and you don't even realize it but you watch it as entertainment because at least in America America just has to be entertained they became addicted to entertainment if they didn't have entertainment you actually sit down and you feel I've got to do something today uh, and and you think well 
I've got to call someone. I've got to talk to someone. Oh, well, I've got to put the television on. I've got to see what's going on. Uh, well, you know, I have... Now, see, these... These are winds that blow. And you go to them without even thinking. Get up in the morning. And you go this way and that way. There's no discipline. There's no reality of God. There's no truth. Now, I say not these things to condemn you, but to enlighten you to redirect you, to start getting some order in your life, to start getting something in your day that will lead you into all truth, that will cause you to understand not to run there first, not to run here first, not to call your friends up first, not to think about your friends, not to not to think about, well, you've got to be occupied because you you feel like you're not doing nothing. And you see, your feelings also blow. Your feelings. Not anybody else's feelings. Your feelings. Then you get, well, I don't know why. I just don't feel right. I don't feel any peace. I feel nothing. Well, if you are looking for feelings, you will find them in all the wrong places. Feelings are not something that comes to you because they are something to follow. Some feelings can be depressive some feelings can make you feel bad, so bad. Or they could make you feel good when you're doing wrong. Those are feelings. They mean nothing. Except that you shouldn't follow the wrong ones. I sat here with the intention of giving you a message about where knowing how we are, knowing how the human mind works, knowing how the human heart works, knowing how the imagination works, how people prey upon you, P-R-E-Y. They prey upon you. Your likes, your dislikes, what you want to eat, what you don't want to eat, where you go, where you don't go. They prey upon you. They want to sell you something. I mean, it's unbelievable when you think about it. Don't eat this and don't eat that. This is all bad for you. Eat this. It's my product. And it will cost you. Don't go here and don't go there. Go here. It's my product. But then when you get 2,000 of them, Everywhere you turn, somebody is saying, this is my product. Follow me. Same thing happens in the spiritual realm. Exactly the same thing. You see, demon forces are very well organized. You know, organizations that do this and organizations that do that. And they're very well organized when it comes to misleading you when it comes to leading you in the wrong direction. Again, this is what makes the Word of God so important. Now, you can know the Word and still not use it. Still treat it as though it's dead. You treat it as though God don't live anymore. He's been dead for a long time. Oh, I know he resurrected and went into heaven, but what does that have to do with me? He doesn't help me any. I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed, and he is never there. Why? Most people, the first thing they do 
is blame God for it. They don't ever, ever go to God and say, It is me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Search me, O Lord, and see if there is any iniquity within me. Help me, O Lord, to be obedient. You see, that's not condemnation. That is asking God to help you in your day. To help you to do what is right. God says, don't worry about tomorrow, because sufficient unto that day is the evil thereof. So there's going to be plenty of things in there that's going to try to mislead you, deceive you, hurt you, harm you. And you're going to have to get up in the morning and protect yourself, protect your family. Oh, I don't mean by rebuking Satan. I don't mean by talking to him. I mean by asking God to cover your heart and your mind, your soul and everything about you and your family with the blood of Jesus Christ and shut out anything that might come against your well-being spiritually. That's first. Shut out anything that might come against your family, your finances, your neighborhood. Shut it out, Lord. See, when you go before God, there's a difference between handling Satan and talking to him first or talking to God. You see, when you talk to God, the prayer changes. It's completely different. It's completely different than the one that is standing there and saying, Satan, you're not going to do this to me. You're not. Oh, I see him over there, and this might happen, and that might. Oh, no, 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 no. One that really has God, even though they haven't made it the way they think they should, even though they haven't gotten where they think they should, the one that has God doesn't think like that at all. They know. They know their morning is bright. Whether the sun is shining or not, God is on your side. They know that according to the word, that when you worked out everything with God, that now you have something to sing and shout about because you belong to Him. And His leadership is right there. It brings peace. And if you don't have that peace, you go before God and say, Lord, lead me right now into the right direction to lead me into peace. Help me, help me, Lord, to accept you as you are, not as I think you are, not as, pe as people say you are, but the way you are. Lead and guide me into your word. Which one do I need today? What do I need to understand today? What do you want of me, Lord? I'm here. Lord, here am I. I'm going to tell you why this is so important to you. To know how to handle your day. How to take things, first things first. You say, oh, uh, but uh, I have this habit. And, and, and I, do. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. And my Jesus in my heart is stronger, stronger than anything I can face. So I look at what I'm doing. You know, some people, they just do. I told you there's two different kinds of people. The kind of people that are strictly emotional 
they they go after their emotions how they feel leads them and there are some people who are thinkers they go oh wait a minute before I go there I need to understand this before I do this and they're thinkers they're blessed they're able to think and I had talked about the two different categories of people that some can think they're raised that way and from the time they've been little somebody has reasoned with them and somebody has talked with them and helped them to think but the others they've been beaten they've been abused and all they know is self-preservation how to protect themselves from the next beating the next uh, tirade with the mouth that's all they know when they get up they know they have faced it all of their life and it's going to be same old same old in their thinking but you see there is the Word of God that will redirect your mind that you will no longer be a slave to what goes in the air all of the curses that someone has brought upon you all of the evil that someone is working against you you don't have to go there because you see now you have Jesus and he's for real oh my goodness is he for real now some of you may think you're talking to me like I'm a baby well I am talking to some babies those babies can never grow up unless they hear and see the truth some babies are so bogged down with emotions with feelings with lack of understanding some of them are so filled with fear and self-preservation some of them some of them are very selfish and some of them can think I didn't know what I was going to say when I picked up this microphone today I had no idea I even wondered I still have one purpose about the future you know how the Antichrist is going to uh, is a false prophet and wants you to worship the beast well I have my understanding as to what the beast is I have my understanding of what the false prophet is I have my understanding as to why it has to be worship I really believe that the future holds a false religion that claims God and won't live for God that does every evil that it can do that believes Satan is God because he sets you free from all responsibility he sets you free from all ability or even desire to want the truth if it feels good do it oh my goodness one of those presidents that stood on a stage not too long ago said it's exhilarating to be possessed by a demon the freedom is wonderful I mean he traveled someplace how many times over and over and over so he could enjoy that and God only knows what was truly done there you want what I think was done there I won't give you what I think I'll give you what I know there were a lot of 
children that died there. When they're done, whether you're a man or a woman, or whether you're a child and they're done with you, they kill you. Nobody knows who you are. There's no record of your birth. There's no nothing. So they just kill you. And nobody can see, nobody can hear. At least that's what they think. But you know what? God said this about Abel when Cain killed him. Your brother's blood cries to me out of the ground. God doesn't stop hearing the cry. He is 24-7 working on doing something about that. He is your only hope. To know that he is righteous, he is holy, he is true. Look up holy. Look up the word virtue. The most virtuous man on this earth that ever walked was Jesus Christ. And his blood was filled with the purity, virtue. I've said it before in other places about how the woman who touched the hem of his garment and he felt virtue come out. Do you know that when you search for his moral excellence, which is being Christ-like, when you search for it, he feels virtue come out of him. He's touched. He takes notice. Out of millions, he takes notice. This one wants me. This one truly is desiring to know me. Oh, you can search for God so you could be the greatest prophet. You could search for God so that you could be the greatest preacher. You could search for God so that you could even be the greatest mother or the greatest father or the greatest anything. You could search for God so that you could have this and you could have that. But do you search for God because you want to be like him? Ah. <sighs> That's the key. That is one key. You know, the keys to heaven that Jesus said he gave to Peter? Keys. He didn't say the key to heaven. Keys. In order to be able to find Jesus Christ, you have to know that he's holy, righteous, virtuous. There are certain things he would never do. There are certain things he would never say. They are, there are certain things that he would never lead you to do. How do you recognize him? You recognize him as the most holy, most righteous, most virtuous person that would never do one thing wrong. So if you have anything that leads you into what goes against his own words, you know it's not him. Because he doesn't do that. God is not a man that he should lie. He promised you that if you sought after him, if you went to him, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all the rest will be added. Have you ever been in a position where that's all you sought was God and God daily was supplying all your needs? You didn't have to ask for them. You didn't have to beg for them. They just happened because his word is true. Now, I was talking about the false prophet wanting to worship 
want to people to worship the beast. The ultimate goal of Lucifer is to have proof to himself that he is as good as God and he's God and he's got God. So what does he do? He gathers up as many people who believe that he is God because they are free to be able to kill, to rape, to destroy, to hate, to do any evil they choose. And he teaches them, and they teach others, that Jesus is the devil because he holds you responsible for your sins. Never mind that he set you free from them so you won't sin. But you see, this kind of belief has been growing and growing and growing unchecked. Well, you live in a country where you can check it. You can stop it. But when you don't have Jesus, that's a difficult thing to do because you don't know how to pray. You don't know who is who. And you won't go into the Word to find out because it's just plain boring. It has, The flesh has no pleasure in it. So you get tired. And I, you know, you sit down and you try to read the word like a book, and you can't. The word of God is something that enters into your spirit and permeates your mind and your whole body if you let it. But when he's dead to you and you read it, it happened a long time ago, it'll never happen again. God doesn't want me. All of this garbage comes to you. But when you ask God to open up your understanding, to give you the Holy Spirit, to be able to discern the truth in a lie, to be able to fear you the way, fear God the way you need to, in a, in a sense of respect, reverence. That is a form of fear. I won't do that because I don't want to offend him. Now that's love. I don't do this because it's wrong. Well, and I don't do that because it's wrong. And then suddenly it turns into, I don't do this because I don't want to hurt him. So perfect love casts out all fear. But the fear of the Lord is your schoolmaster. But some of you take it to a fault. Some of you live in fear constant. When do you grow up into love? When do you not do? When do you realize that he made you, he understands you, and he will help lead you into all truth? I'm going to tell you just a little taste of what the goal is to do. You see, things are happening right now because nobody cares if you you have to defend your home so therefore somebody has to get hurt because you can't let them come in and invade your family, kill your children, do whatever they want, rob you of everything you have. So you have to take a defense. You have to stand there and say, no, I'm not going to let you do that. And you see, they allow this to happen so that you can kill one another off. Because the less people on earth, the more the elites have for themselves. And they don't want humans anymore. They want to run this world with robots. They have the money. They can use them for everything and not to ever have to pay a penny for it. So they only use humans for their own pleasure. Child means nothing to them. <laughs> Who cares? 
Who cares if this one is teaching that? Who cares if you, and I'm talking to you, you need to care. Humanity is for real. Oh, I'm not saying that you need to care for those that are being used to invade you. You know, like there's a certain uh, people that go against Israel and they use children as human shields because they don't care if their own children die. But they know you do. They know that those people do. So they put them up, and then you know what they do? They, they attack you, and then they blame you for it. Oh, you could see that spirit working in every home. You can see that when you're married to a certain kind of person, they will attack you. They will do every evil to you, and they will blame you in the end. There's no fear of God before their eyes. How do you get out of that? Oh, there is a way, and his name is Jesus Christ. And if you spend your time with him, he will reveal to you each and every day, every morning, every day day how to act how to think how to feel and how to handle these things instead of crying instead of begging instead of being sure you're going to go down he said if you had faith of a mustard seed as small as a mustard seed you could say unto the mountain be thou removed and it will be cast out into the deepest sea. Those things are real. Very real. You have to ask yourself a question. What is a false prophet? Are you you who claim to have everything, are you a false prophet? Do you ever question yourself? When you teach people, like Romans says, if you teach people and you take such pride that you teach everybody what the truth is, you who, say, who teach not to commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who teach people not to lie, do you lie? Do you do evil so that good may come? Which Paul says, your damnation is just. You don't do evil. I hear some tell me, well, you know, I, I get convicted and I know that what I'm doing is wrong and I seem to fall into it. Ah. Ask God for the grace to think before you leap. Ask God to give you the power to think because oftentimes you're going by emotions, feelings. And that's why you keep falling. Well, I don't want to go on this one too long. There's, there's a lot of information in here. Each and every one of my videos, you cannot tell what is in there by the... Uh, by the titles and it's not a matter of uh, how do you say this isn't a matter of theology I don't teach theology this isn't a matter of anything I reach the human heart as much as I can to make it real to them are you there and go before God and get rid of it Plead the blood to you know that it's gone and you will never be like that again. Not to take you and say, oh, you're doing this wrong. So now you fall down and you cry and you cry and you beat on yourself. That's not what God wants. 
He wants you to take it to him, pray about it, cover it with the blood, get it in the sea of his forgetfulness, and go on. And if when you go on, you're not fully prepared and do not understand, and you might fall again. But take it to God again, for a good man falls many times. But an evil man stays there and wallows in it. A good man can fall over and over and over. I'm talking about a good woman also. But when I talk about man, I talk about mankind, which is both men and women. Human beings, 